Are you looking to learn how to pack for your trip to Alaska so that you'll be nice and warm when you're either looking at those magical northern lights or hanging on to a dog sled? Great. Keep watching because here comes Jason Murray now, who is president and founder of Southwest Adventure Tours, who will explain what you'll need to know when packing for your tour. Hello, this is Jason Murray with Southwest Adventure Tours. I am super excited to be one of the guides that is hosting our Northern Lights Tours up in Fairbanks, Alaska this winter. Um, currently, I'm here in Chena Hot Springs. Um, one of the destinations we go to as part of the experience. I wanted to cover a few things to help all of our guests have the best experience possible while they're up here in Alaska. Uh, one of the things I want to cover first off is things that we provide um, as part of the trip and some of the things that we normally do that we've made some changes to just because of the environment that we're in. Uh, one of the first things we do here is <clears throat> we provide, um, because of the icy nature of the area we're in, we do provide uh, traction control devices, um, basically snow chains for your feet, yak tracks, uh, whatever you want to call them, uh, to help the guests um, that are on this trip be able to walk in the snowy icy conditions without worrying about slipping and falling. So we do have uh, an entire set of these, um, enough for everyone in the vehicle to be able to uh, walk around and not have to worry about that. Another thing we do, and we don't have one for everyone, but we do have a few sets of these, is we have these portable tripods. Um, now this one isn't extended all the way, it extends up to 48 inches. Um, tall, uh, but it's a fully functional tripod. We have uh, five or six of these in the uh, tour van, and these are available for guests to use when we're doing aurora viewing, or if you want to use them while out hiking and exploring in different areas we go to. Uh, this one <coughs> um, can be used either by cell phone or by a normal camera or camcorder. Uh, so just an example of how this one works. You know, you can sit there and just mount your phone just like this. It fits almost all models. Um, definitely need some of those more oversized ones. It still is large enough and expands large enough to do that. Or you can take this part off and it has the mounting bracket here, the plate, to be able to um, mount a normal camera or camcorder. And it is strong enough and supportive enough to do um, one of the uh, DSLRs. Um, if you want a more fancy one, you can always bring your own, but we do have these available for you to use. Uh, one other change that we did is with water. So normally we provide a couple bottles of water at the first of the trip, and then we have um, gallon jugs inside the vehicle because it does get um, below freezing, um, and especially during the certain months of the year, it will get um, down to you know, negative 10, negative 20 at night, uh, that's gonna freeze the water, so anything we provide would be unavailable for the guests. So we ask you to bring reusable water bottles like this one here, and just refill them either in your hotel room, restaurants, different places like that. Uh, there's plenty of places to stop and do those refills at. Uh, we recommend you bring two of them, and uh, that should provide you with enough hydration throughout the day. Um, once again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that just we can't keep the water from freezing inside the vehicle, but also it really does reduce our carbon footprint. Fairbanks is a very rural community. Yes, it's 100,000 people in there, but it is a rural community. Um, and then also when we get to Chena Hot Springs, we are really out in the middle of nowhere. So we want to reduce our impact on the environment as much as possible. and. Um, we want to use these reusable water bottles if possible. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is what you need to pack to bring to have the best success possible while you're out here. Uh, for starters, one thing I still recommend, even though we're in and out of the vehicle, it's not as much activity, is we recommend some type of day pack, stuff sack, something like that to be able to keep all your stuff in. Uh, we are in the same hotel for multiple nights. We're not always gonna be around our luggage, so you wanna be able to have something to pull your 
um, snow gear in and out of, or gloves or anything else you might need, chopstick, snacks, water, those type of things. So please bring some type of bag um, to put that all in. The second thing you want is different layers. Um, can we go over just the different layers I use uh, and are am currently using uh, while I'm up here. Uh, something lightweight, a nice fleece jacket, sweater, um, sweatshirt, something like that. A good, um, easy layer to bring on and off, um, especially when I was hiking today out here in China. Yes, it was 18 degrees, but this is all I used along with the base layer that I have. I have just thermals, my normal jacket, and then this. And I was plenty warm um, with the active things I was doing. So a good base layer coat, uh, you do want that. Um, you do also bring a puppy, uh, something a little bit warmer, especially for those colder moments when I'm not active or anything like that. You do want that also. Um, you can combine these. Um, but usually I use one or the other. Um, I don't usually use both just because then I'm usually too warm. Um, but last but not least is you want some type of windbreaker or uh, outer layer that will be able to retain the heat, especially if there's wind um, or we're moving, especially like on the dog sled experience, you want something that's larger, warmer, it has that protective uh, windbreaker layer. So those are the three coats that um, are three different layers of coats. Now you don't have to, um, you can get by with two uh, as long as you have a good combination or maybe you just need one, but as long as you have some type of combination, that's good to go there. Okay, next thing you want is a good pair of gloves. Um, actually, I have two, and again, this is just recommendations, but this is what I like to do. So I have a lightweight um, pair that I can use just pretty much anywhere, anytime. Um, they're easy to get on and off. Um, they're not super, super warm, uh, but they are uh, pretty much applicable to most activities I'm doing. Um, those times when we're up Aurora viewing or when we are um, doing the snowmobiling or the dog sledding, use a thicker pair. Uh, you want something that's gonna retain that heat, whether it's a mitten, or whether, you know, the finger gloves like these, you just want something that's gonna really keep your hands warm, especially on those cold nights when you're out um, checking out that Aurora, uh, just because, yeah, the heat matters. Uh, the next thing you're gonna want is some type of beanie. Obviously, I'm wearing a beanie, brought an extra one, and here's why, when you're at the uh, um, Chena Hot Springs, you actually, uh, they recommend having a beanie um, to use to keep your head warm, um, while you're in the hot springs itself, uh, just because it is pretty cold outside. So you wanna have that beanie on to, to keep your body temperature up and um, not catch cold. Uh, but any type of beanie works. Uh, some women like to have those headbands instead of the, the beanies themselves, a buff or um, something like that. Anything just to retain that heat there um, up on your uh, head, just again, most of your body heat escapes from your uh, from your head like that. Uh, the other thing is some type of neck gaiter or scarf or something like that. Um, I just use, now during COVID, funny enough, I used a lot of these uh, gaiters, just, you know, this was my mask. Um, and if you have one of these, great. You get to repurpose it for something that's actually a lot of fun instead of COVID, you get to take it. Um, but Anything like this, uh, just because when you uh, do go outside, um, your neck is exposed. Um, so again, whether you use a scarf or anything like that, but in the freezing cold temperature, just having something over your mouth and your nose as you're breathing in and out, it will help with that temperature change between that drastic cold. So something we recommend um, also with uh, just keeping that neck from being exposed to that, those colder temperatures, um, especially at night. Uh, some people like this. I do have one of these also, and this is one of those full face masks. Um, really good long, uh, it's a fleece one, but there's a bunch of different types of these on the market. They have one that's more like a, this type of gator here, but it will go, you know, full face, 
um, cover my head and then also cover my mouth and nose, uh, when it's, especially on those really cold, cold nights. This is really, really nice to have. So there's a lot of different types of these out there again, but something, you need something like that. Okay, last thing I want to talk about is lower layers, especially our feet. Now, um, your lower layer, you know, below the waist, you do want to have some type of thermals or some type of base layer to go underneath your pants. Um, you definitely want that. It is cold. Um, if you want to bring snow pants or some uh, warmer layer to go outside of everything else that's waterproof, uh, that is recommended. You don't have to bring that. Um, I actually personally don't have a pair of those, but I do have a couple thinner and thicker uh, thermals that I do bring along with some base layers that work out really well for me. Um, and that's just what I prefer. On your feet though, your feet are one of the most important things to take care of out here. Uh, now, a couple different styles, but socks. Um, you definitely want to do some type of warm wool or a wool knit polyester or something um, that's going to retain the heat inside your um, shoes and boots. So definitely have good, thick, um, or just really good wool socks. Um, even if they get wet, that's one of the reasons we recommend wool, but if, even if you don't have it, um, there's different styles out there but just something to retain that heat on your feet. Um, and then for shoes wise, I bring two pairs um, while I'm up here. One of them, you know, good pair of sneakers. These are my trail runners, um, but they work out really well. Have a nice aggressive tread that I don't have to worry about slipping on too much. Um, as long as there's a little bit of something to get a hold of and it's not straight ice, but um, good basic shoes. I can use them for night when I'm going to dinners. Um, I can use them around the hotel, uh, different things like that. Um, and even when traveling, that's the shoes I use. That way I'm not having to wear my boots. And then the other thing you need while you're here are boots. Now, there's a lot of different thoughts and opinions on what type of boots to use. Um, these are not snow boots per se. These are actually my hiking boots. Um, they are Gore-Tex lines, so they, they are waterproof up to you know, the ankles, but any type of boots. Um, now, if you don't have a pair of boots, there are a couple places that we can actually rent them from here in Fairbanks uh, when you first arrive. So we can get a nice pair of uh, snow boots for you. You can rent them for the week while you're here and then just return when you're done. Uh, but something that is, you, if you're gonna bring your own pair, if you have something already that works for you, just make sure it's waterproof and um, the biggest thing is also, again, just something with a good tread that you can be able to um, have traction when walking around. Again, we have those Yak Tracks, uh, basically uh, traction control devices to help you while you're out on your tour um, so you're not slipping on that ice, but make sure the boots you do bring and your shoes have a good tread that you'll be able to, to keep um, from slipping. Okay, a couple other things, just a uh, couple other details to help you again have the best experience possible. Um, Fairbanks, good popular city, uh, 4G or 5G internet, um, cell phone data available depending on where you're at in the city. Uh, cellular communication is available at uh, the North Pole and at the Aurora Point Lodge that we go to. Uh, twice and a pause for adventure. Yes, you have cell phone connectivity at all of those places. When you're at Charlie Dome um, for uh, Aurora viewing at Chena Hot Springs, there is cellular communication available at the top of the mountain there. So um, lots of different places there. Uh, the hotels do have Wi-Fi available. Um, Chena Hot Springs is limited <coughs> in some of the places in terms of having connectivity. Uh, for sure, they have it in the uh, main lobby in the restaurant um, and then in some places inside the lodge itself in your hotel room, you can get internet. Um, it is spotty sometimes, so they don't guarantee it, but it is available. 
Uh, there is limited to no cellular communication while you're out of China um, for basically the last 10 miles coming into China Hot Springs itself. And then on the resort property, there's pretty much no communication uh, available. So Wi-Fi only. Um, be prepared for that. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, you do want to get some, uh, if you struggle with staying warm, uh, there's some really cool things that you can get to help you out. Uh, one of them is those uh, heat packets that you can have for your hands or your feet, um, even on, you know, put them inside your coats. Um, those are available. We can uh, just let the guy know that you need to pick some up and we can stop at a store, uh, different outdoor stores um, all throughout Fairbanks that we can stop and get some of those. Um, they make some really cool new uh, coats that actually have heat um, heaters, basically internal heaters, heating systems laced throughout them. Uh, if you've ever seen those, they basically, you just charge a battery pack, plug it in, turn it on, and you know, depending on the coat and you know, the temperatures outside, they can last two to four hours and they're really, really good. Um, that's something you want to consider looking into. Um, with uh, the other things, um, Fairbanks is a pretty good size metropolitan area. It has about 100,000 people in it. Um, there's multiple stores uh, that you can stop at. If you forget something, um, we can definitely stop and grab that for you. Again, if you don't have anything um, winter coat wise, you can um, rent those for the week while you're here. Now, a couple of the activities we go um, and excursions we do while we're here do provide some additional winter gear to help their guests have the best experience possible. One of them is the snowmobiling trip. The snowmobiling trip does provide a full um, body suit, um, basically winter gear, uh, to help you have coverall, I should be the right term for it, um, to help you have the best experience possible. So full face helmet, body suit, um, you're going to be warm and they have all sizes. We haven't run into a problem yet where somebody doesn't fit into one of those. Um, the pause for adventure, which is our dog sledding excursion also has, um, goggles, gloves, coats, um, snow pants. So if you don't have those when you do the dog sledding, because you are moving around and that winds, you know, coming through you, you do want some additional protection there. Another thing you need while you're out here are sunglasses, any type will do. We recommend polarized, but any type of sunglasses because you, um, especially on those sunny days, you are going to get a lot of reflectivity, even just driving around in the van, um, you are going to want those glasses. So make sure you do bring a pair of those. Um, another thing to remember is your swimsuit. Um, China Hot Springs has a fantastic um, hot springs to experience and uh, obviously you want to be able to do that. It's an amazing thing and one of the really highlights that you can have while you're here. Uh, but just make sure you do bring your swimsuit. Also the, the Fairbanks Hotel, the Spring Hill Suites there has a great pool um, that you can go and relax in um, and soak. Um, just, you know, that nice warm up at the end of the day if you want that also. Uh, last thing though is uh, we're really excited to have you um, join us here on the Northern Lights Tour. It's just a surreal, amazing experience to have. There's so much to see, so much to do, and just seeing those Northern Lights is just the cream of the crop when it comes to just topping everything else out. Uh, if you're prepared, um, you have those things, it's going to be an amazing experience. Uh, we'll do everything we can when you get here to make sure you have the best experience possible. We're excited to have you join us on this tour and uh, the adventure awaits. We'll see you in Fairbanks.